Welcome to Ladywood. As the young people know it and the community know it, Woods. I'm your host, King, youth worker, 15 years. Now I'm here to talk about Ladywood, the diversity and the community spirit that lives within. Now I'm only gonna talk about the outside of Ladywood, but I'm gonna start at this famous statue here, Charles Bloodwin. Excuse my French if I'm pronouncing it wrong, but this man once walked across the Niagara Falls on a tightrope and in 1873, he walked across Edgebaston Reservoir on the tightrope. So now, here we start at Charles. And if you follow the path from Charles down to the new leisure centre that's being built, down the dual carriageway to the library, from the library up to Brindley Place, the BT Tower that everybody knows in Birmingham, onto Broad Street, up Broad Street, onto this dual carriageway where I stand now, back up to Charles. Now I'm here to tell you about Ladywood. Now Ladywood is a beautiful community and the spirit you're within, you cannot beat. I've lived in Ladywood my whole life with my family. So my name's Harry and I've lived in Ladywood for about uh, seven years, since about 2013. I originally came from Hereford, uh, moved to Birmingham and now live yeah, in this Ladywood community. I've lived in Ladywood for about 17 years with my siblings, my mum and my nan. So my name's Iris Birds. I run an organisation called Birds Associates here in Ladywood and we work with young emerging artists and creatives to create opportunities for them to really work about the area and work about what matters to them in Birmingham and the wider West Midlands. Hi, my name is Teja and I'm 16 years old. Yeah, I think there's a really big community spirit here in Ladywood. There's always people around, everyone's smiling and it's kind of that community feel, whereas some places you may go, there's that uh, more sort of spread out feeling about people. Whereas here, everyone is kind of just, um, yeah, feels together and yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I feel like there is a community spirit because we all come together as a whole and there's just always good vibes. Everybody knows each other and everybody, when they're walking past each other, likes to say hello or nods or smiles. Whenever I come to Ladywood, I feel like there's a really big community spirit and everyone's like family around here. Uh, yeah, Ladywood is a really cool place to live because it has that community feeling and like everyone kind of knows each other, like neighbours know each other and it's just uh, yeah, that vibe of uh, like a, a place where you feel you want to live. Uh, very diverse. When you go to the park you see like a range of races, a variety of races and I think it's a very nice, diverse and multicultural area. I would say Ladywood's a diverse area but I wouldn't at the same time because you mainly see more black people around this area more than anything. I think there's a very big community spirit in Ladywood because everybody comes together as like a group, almost like a family and it's a very diverse area and everybody gets along and there's rarely any beef. So I've lived in Ladywood for about 10 years. Um, I used to work in all other places so I moved here originally because I worked a lot in the black country and it's a very convenient place for the city and the black country. So with COVID we've become hyper localized and really connected with the community. So I really like it here because it's really diverse and I feel completely at home because everybody's at home in Ladywood. Um, I first heard about the coronavirus in around March last year when I was getting ready to take my GCSEs and then they got cancelled. I first heard about coronavirus in 2020 around January, February time, but everybody took it as a joke back then. The first time I heard about the coronavirus was November 2019 and I thought it was just a joke or like I knew it was true but I just think, didn't think it was that serious. I first heard about coronavirus in March of 2020 when I was at youth club. 
and we were informed that the club will be closing down due to coronavirus. Um, it's affected me in a few different ways. I feel like the lack of, you know, social interaction is like really, really damaging to like your mental health. But I feel like lockdown has been a nice time to pause and reflect on our lives. Lockdown has affected me in terms of school because I was supposed to do work experience. But what would that help me get a job after school life? But I didn't get to do that. I think the coronavirus has affected me in a very negative way because it's made me become very lazy and give up on all the things that I was good at and my hobbies such as I used to go to a park and see some animals and I start going to college and do my college work and all other things that kept me occupied throughout the day and it just made me become very lazy. Lockdown hasn't really affected me because I still did the same things I do on a normal day, just with a mask on. Over doing lockdown um, online lessons, I found it really, really hard to find the motivation to you know, get up and log on and participate in all of the work. Online lessons was hard because I didn't like to focus. I focused better in the classroom and get more work done in school. I'm so happy that I won't be able to sit my exams. I'll be real, like, that's just, that's just... Yeah, I'm happy about not sitting down, but it's a little bit more stressful in terms of we have to have work completed by certain dates just so that we make sure that we get a grade. It was really, really difficult because, you know, I worked stuff, I revised, and then for them to just get cancelled felt like, you know, like, it just, it was quite upsetting to have all that work for nothing. Um, okay, online lessons, I didn't take them seriously. I didn't think it was that important because... I thought I was going back to school in like a month or two but then we ended up taking at least six months off school and I think it affected me, it affected me a lot because as I said I wasn't taking them serious and now that exams have come up it's like I'm behind on some learning. So since I've been here, since I've been living here in the last seven years, there's been like changes over that time and like small things and big things. I noticed like just things that tend to make life more difficult for people. So for example, there's a, a cash point over there that disappeared so people can't pay in cash for things anymore. Uh, there's a minimum credit card for um, fee, not fee, uh, what's the word? There's a minimum credit card um, purchase amount for things that people have to buy minimum amounts. Um, and one big thing that's happened to me is that where I live back there, I had a letter in 2019 saying that I'd have to pay for uh, cladding changes to my building. And it's not a little bit like it's not a little bit of money, it's a lot of money. And for someone like me who works myself, having to come up with like huge amounts of money, and when I mean huge, like in the tens of thousands. It's not very nice and it's like really stressful. And so, yeah, like things like that, you don't get much control over and it kind of affects your mental health a lot. So where the government or the council have control, um, they, they could be helping people more, but obviously um, the council don't always see what's going on in little local communities as much as they say they do or would like to and they don't necessarily know how it's affecting people individually, the things they are doing to, uh, let's say, better the area and change things. And the stuff that's going on there is meant to be for like safety, but in actual fact, they've affected me more in the other way because of um, yeah, money and mental health and things like that.
So the Tower Ballroom here is actually in Ladywood, but of course it sits by the Edgbaston Reservoir. So people think it's part of Edgbaston, but it's Ladywood. And it's been a very important thing in the history of Ladywood, which was a very working class area. And this is where people went to let the hair down, get out of the really damp back to backs. And I think in many ways that reflects very much how we live now. So we live in very cramped conditions often and we need a place to escape and to vision and dream a better living, I think. So for me, it's really sad that it's closed because I think there's many young people in the area who could do work in the Tower Ballroom, like creative work, exploring identity. And I think working with creative work also can help you to make choices about other careers. It gives you some grounding of who you are. I think also the building is almost 200 years old and many young people don't even know what it was or what it signifies. So there could be a real recapturing of history and intergenerational work with discovering this history, owning it, loving it and dreaming it afresh. The most challenging thing about lockdown, I would say, would have had to be not being able to go to shops and like McDonald's because the first lockdown, McDonald's was not open, so I couldn't get my normal McDonald's meals. Plus, they don't do the mango pineapple smoothie anymore because they did reduce my new thing. I think the most challenging thing is not being able to, you know, connect with your friends and like just missing that social interaction. It's really hard. I'm looking forward to going out with my friends, go to all the multis, go to the parties, the black parties, the barbecues. Um, I'm looking forward to going out with all my friends, you know, visiting different places across the country and hopefully, you know, going on holiday if it's possible and just living life. So in the future, like in the next five years or so, I hope to still be here because I really enjoy living in Ladywood. The community feeling, it's close to like places around. The infrastructure and uh, facilities are pretty good in the area. I can sort of get to the train station, there's gyms, there's um, cinemas, there's things like that that's in very close walking distance. And even like uh, the reservoir, canals. So it's a really kind of nice place to live. And I don't want to be kind of pushed out by things like the council charging me loads of money and yeah, like I, I hope I can stay here because if for any reason I did have to move, it'd be very difficult to kind of move to somewhere else with what it's costing me to live here and my income. Honestly, I feel like Ladywood hasn't changed that much from 10, 15 years ago to now. I think it stayed the same. The only thing that's changed is how it looks. It looks more modern now and yeah, I just feel like nothing's changing really. In the next five years, I see Ladewood as a very built up area and like a very sparse area because everybody's getting moved out of the community so that they can build it up for the richer people. I don't think anything's changing because Ladywood is a ghetto area, like you can't change that at all, no matter how much fancy buildings you put here, no matter how modern you make it look, it's not going to change the people in the area and how they act. No, I don't want to stay here at all, like no matter how pretty it looks, no matter how much people can say it's changed, here's just not where I want to be. Ladywood has really changed in the last five years. There seems to be a real pressure from many directions. One pressure is from the city centre encroaching almost on us. So this being a very strong working class area, the city is very much people who have more money, people who look for smaller flats. And that really pushes, I think, the original population out. I think the other pressure in Ladywood is really the sort of rise of student housing and um, houses in multiple occupation, which in itself shouldn't be a problem, but it becomes a problem when there is not enough community to, for these places to sit in. So you haven't got enough permanent neighbours anymore. And I think that's the thing which then fractures the community and makes it easier to disperse. I think the Tower Ballroom, looking at a community centre, it also is in a unique location. There could be opportunities to work closer with the Sailing and the Rowing Club to really give young people a new outlook on how you, what you could do outside, how you could um, do recreation, how you could work with sailing and rowing. But I also think connecting with different people, because a lot of people who use the water come in from the outside and that connection is completely lost. 
So having that sort of rooting them back into the community and I think that's a great opportunity to see diverse views on how we use the water or on water sports because they're very much considered a class thing, you know. So sailing is really, but it shouldn't be, you know. So I think doing some deeper work rather than just putting clubs on or open days, actually doing some deeper work, inviting people in and then you also get a more own sense of ownership for young people of the area, which is what we want to have really. So we start looking after our area more because we own it. It makes sense. When you say Birmingham, I think Ladywood. When you say Ladywood, I think home, a sort of halfway, not quite palatable for the people whose money shines brighter than ours. It's a kind of middle ground between the city and grime, big jobs and crime. They polish us up with their big city plans, with their high rise eyes that look down at us as if we don't belong. They call us pieces because somehow they think we don't quite look right on our own, but together we make the full picture. You see, our parents planted dreams deep beneath these cracked pavements, uprooting through our businesses, family, schools, art, our youth centres. Soil still cupped in their hands, watch us as we grow. We, the lockdown generation, the hands on chest generation, the hidden behind mass generation, the waiting, the uncertain yet unwavering generation, watch us as we grow. <laughs> <laughs>